Suzuki called Pointless. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? Yeah. So the concept of the game is a bit like, if you remember Family Feuds, so they'd ask a hundred people to name a hundred things. So for example, they want people to name a country beginning with B. So if you say Brazil, that might score 60. If you say Botswana, that might score 10. So the aim of the game is to get the lowest possible score to try and be pointless. I had never seen this show and one of my friends phoned me up one day and said um, I'm thinking of applying for a TV game show, would you like to go on it with me? I said, well I don't really know the show, I've never seen it, um, but yeah why not? So we filled out an application and then we both got separate phone calls from the production team and they asked us 10 general knowledge questions down the phone and she said to me, you've got 10 out of 10 correct. I said, is that a problem? She said, no, 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 we'd like to invite you for an audition. So off we went for this audition. And the next thing we knew, we got a letter saying, thank you for attending the audition, but unfortunately you've been unsuccessful. You're on the short list, the waiting list, but you're not on the programme. Then we got a phone call a week later to say someone had dropped out. Could we get to London and they'd pay our expenses and we could be on the programme. So off we went to London to BBC Television Centre. And it was great just to go inside an iconic building like that and see how they made this TV show. But anyway, it starts off with four teams of two. And the first round of questions, it was all about naming bands which have siblings in them. And me and my friend Ben, who were playing together, well, we both gave pointless answers. Woohoo! So we got through to the next round. So in the next round, you've got three teams playing. Now this was sports stars and their nicknames. We didn't do too well in that round. The maximum score you could get is 200. And remember, you're trying to score as close to zero as possible. We got 136, but... Thank goodness for a little old lady called Valerie who lived in Essex because she did not know that Usain Bolt was known as the Lightning Bolt and as a consequence of that she and her husband ended up with 137. So we got through to the next round. So now you've got two teams of two playing in the head-to-head -head and you have to do the best of three in this round. So the question is Name an ingredient in a Niçoise salad. I could only think of tuna. So I said tuna, and it came out at being 25, which is okay. The people we're playing against, they said hard-boiled egg. It went down to 26. So by one point, we were one nil up. But remember, it's the best of three. So the next question, name a George Orwell novel. They went first and they said the road to Wigan Pier. 10, 9, 8, 7, 5. Okay, well this is where I had my slumdog millionaire moment because <laughs> I studied the political novels of George Orwell. So I said homage to Catalonia, which was all about his experiences in the Spanish Civil War. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Yay! So we're in the final, just us. Now, in the final, you get three options. You don't know what they are. They give you three topics that you can choose from. So the co topics we had were chemistry, international relations, or television chat shows. So we went for television chat shows. And the question was, name someone who has been a guest on the Jonathan Ross chat show. Now the Jonathan Ross chat show is the biggest chat show in the UK and anyone who has anything to promote or sell goes on that show. All it takes, remember, is one person out of the hundred people they've asked to name someone and you don't win. Because to win the jackpot you have to get zero. You have to get a pointless answer. I do not watch the Jonathan Ross chat show because I do not like Jonathan Ross. So we're pretty much stuffed. So you get three goals, and Ben, who I was playing with, he's a big Doctor Who fan. So he said Karen Gillan. Karen Gillan was Doctor Who's assistant, and actually she comes from Inverness. So he said Karen Gillan. Uh -uh, wrong answer. She wasn't one of the people who'd even been on the Jonathan Walsh chat show. 
Now, I said I didn't like Jonathan Ross, and I don't. But on the BBC, there'd been a lot of shows where people had been just auditioning for big West End musicals. And Andrew Lloyd Webber, the composer, had been in front of a lot of these shows. So I thought maybe he's been on the Jonathan Ross Chuck show. So we said to him, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one person, said Andrew Lloyd Webber. One person stopped us winning the jackpot. However, I watched the Jonathan Ross chat show once, and the only reason I watched it is because of a singer, some of you might know, an 80s singer from Britain called Shadi. Now she released a new album, and I loved her work, and I knew she was going to be on this show, so I watched it just to see her. I said, Shadi, and it went 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and we won the jackpot. Oh, so, there's a pointless story for you. It was a considerable amount of money, shall we say. And it was enough to go travelling, so I went all over South America and Africa with it. So, uh, to me, it was money I would never have got at any other time. It was a windfall, so you do something that you would never have done with that kind of money. So, so if anybody fancies going on a TV chat show, I would thoroughly recommend it.